The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the Great Garment Graphics Webinar, Artwork 101. My name is Juliette Calmetta and I'll be your presenter today. I work with Stalls ID Direct. I've been with Stalls for seven years. I uh, specialize in cutters and software support. We also have here today Dane Clement. He is a subject matter and he has started Great Dane Graphics. Dane, did you want to explain a little bit about yourself? I started a graphic design studio in 1991 and we've been doing artwork and separations for the screen printing or apparel industry since. Okay. Well, we, we want to thank you for being here with us today and sharing your knowledge and expertise. We really appreciate it. Great. I'm happy to be here. I also wanted to mention that if you have any questions, feel free to type them in at any time and we'll review them after the webinar or we may review them on the blog after the webinar. We'll go to the next slide. Today's agenda, we're going to review Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator. We're going to talk about different file types and what they are, and about file formatting and sizing. In 1987, Corel hired two software engineers to develop a vector-based illustration program to bundle with their desktop publishing system. The program, Corel Draw, was initially released in 1989. Corel Draw is positioned as a graphics suite rather than just a vector graphics program. It runs on Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. The latest version is X5, which was released on February 23, 2010. We're going to go to the next slide and review that uh, most of the main players are amongst embroiderers with Corel Draw. <clears throat> Excuse me. It costs around $250 to $500. The system requirements include Microsoft Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP with the latest service packs installed, 32 or 64-bit editions, Intel Pentium 4, AMD Athlon, 64 and AMD Optron. It needs 1 gigabyte of RAM, 750 megabytes of hard disk space, 1 gigabyte for typical installation without content. Up to six gigabytes needed to install extra content, a mouse or tablet, a 1024 by 768 screen resolution, 768 by 1024 on a tablet PC, a DVD drive, and Microsoft Internet Explorer 7 or higher. CorelDRAW is different from its competitors in a number of ways. A full range of editing tools allow the user to adjust contrast, color balance, change the format from RGB to CMYK, add special effects such as vignettes and special borders to bitmaps. Bitmaps can also be edited more extensively using Corel Photo Paint, opening the bitmap directly from Corel Draw and returning to the program after saving. It also allows a laser to cut out any drawings. CorelDRAW is capable of handling multiple pages along with multiple master layers. Multi-page documents are easy to create and edit, and the Corel print engine allows for booklet and other impositions, so even simple printers can be used for producing finished documents. One of the useful features for single and multi-page documents is the ability to create linked text boxes across documents that can be resized and moved while the text itself resets and flows through the box. Useful for creating and editing multi-article newsletters, etc. Smaller items like business cards, invitations and such, can be designed to their final page size and imposed to the printer's sheet size for cost-effective printing. An additional print merge feature using a spreadsheet or text merge file allows full personalization for many things like numbered raffle tickets, individual invitations, membership cards and more. Corel's Draw's competitors include Adobe Illustrator, although Illustrator is a vector-based illustration program, the user experience differs greatly. While the program will read its native file types and vice versa, the translation is rarely perfect. Corel Draw can open Adobe PDF files, Adobe PageMaker, Microsoft Publisher, and Word, 
and other programs can print documents to PDF using the Adobe PDF Writer printer driver, which Corel can then open and edit every aspect of the original layout and design. CorelDRAW can also open PowerPoint presentations and other Microsoft formats with little or no problem. So how many times have you received the fifth generation photocopy, a barely readable fax, an extremely rough bitmap image, or best of all, a sketch on a cocktail napkin? Many make the common mistakes of importing this artwork into embroidery software to try and make adjustments on the fly where they spend more time tweaking elements and never end up with a professional looking job. The other approach is to take these questionable pieces of artwork and recreate them from scratch rather than trying to edit portions. The end result here is a better job and more satisfied customer. Not everyone has an art department, but even shops without can tackle some of the artwork in-house with Corel. After receiving poor artwork, the first thing to do is notify the customer that the art is not acceptable and request better artwork. If there is no better art available, inform the customer that their artwork needs to be recreated for the best possible results. Corel, Corel can be used to recreate art. Vector tracing is one of the most efficient methods of utilizing a program's, the graphic program. How many times have a customer handed over a print of the scanned image when what you needed was a nice clean vector file. Manual conversion of a bitmap into vector is extremely time consuming. Adapting images from print or scans into a vector format often requires hours of work and knowledge of drawing tools. CorelDRAW has a built-in feature that allows users to automatically convert bitmapped image into vector image using a trace function. Lettering is another powerful function. The problem with both fonts and customer supplied artwork is that unless it is vector, the pixelization makes it very difficult to create nice straight columns with uniform column width. Lettering recreates allowed graphics to be imported with cleaner bitmap lines or razor sharp vector lines. It is extremely easy to create a variety of lettering styles such as straight, arched, freeformed, tenant shaped, and the list can go on and on. Go to the next slide. Another advantage of working in Corel is the ability to manipulate shapes. A bitmap image is a solid object and is very difficult to modify. Since a bitmap is comprised of pixels, any editing must be done through the manipulation of the individual pixels. A vector object can easily be edited through the manipulation of the nodes. A node represents a point on a shape and a node controls the composition of a shape in regards to whether lines are straight or curved. Fewer nodes makes e editing an easier task. Another great way to manipulate shapes is through the use of the weld, trim, and intersect functions. One of the easiest and most useful of these tools is the weld function. The weld function combines multiple objects into a single outline when, for example, adding an outline to a script font. Without welding, each character would have a full outline, which would not be correct. After welding, the outline will follow the parameter of connected letters, not producing a full outline. Trimming an object removes any area within the objects that overlap. Intersect creates a separate object of the areas within an object that intersect each other. Directly integrating CorelDRAW into embroidery software takes all the great ways to use CorelDRAW and combines them with an embroidery software program to offer the best of both worlds. There are two different ways that software companies integrate CorelDRAW into embroidery software. The first is by keeping CorelDRAW and the embroidery software functioning as two parallel systems that share information back and forth. Designs are created in Corel and transferred into the embroidery software program as artwork or as automatically defined embroidery shapes. Knowledge of both embroidery software and Corel Draw are required. In some cases, designs can be created in the embroidery software and then automatically converted into vector objects for use with other media. The second method is through the use of an embroidery plugin to Corel Draw application. A plugin is an addition to Corel that adds embroidery functionality to CorelDRAW itself. Users do not have two separate programs to work with or two separate programs to learn. All drawing work, no manipulation, and 
editing is done with CorelDRAW tools rather than embroidery tools. After a shape is drawn, embroidery properties rather than print values are assigned to the shape. This process is great for the graphic designer who wants to add embroidery but does not want to learn an entirely new program. Now Dane is going to talk a little bit about Adobe Illustrator. Okay, most of the things that um, that Juliet just mentioned with Corel are actually the, can be done in Illustrator as well. What Illustrator is, it's a vector program, um, and it's it's a drawing program that, make, that can make technical illust illustrations, elaborate drawings, graphics, uh, and page designs. We used to use it quite a bit. I've been actually working with Illustrator since 1988. I hate to say that out loud, um, but it's been around for quite a while, and it's. Um, it grows and morphs into bigger and better things each year. Uh, it's a companion program for Adobe Photoshop, so most people that are using Illustrator will be using Photoshop as well. Uh, and usually, you can buy it in a graphic suite, which has um, well, there's many options as uh, with the other other programs that can come into it. In other words, you can get um, Photoshop and Illustrator along with Dreamweaver and InDesign and all these other programs uh, to do, let you create artwork for absolutely anything. Um, Illustrator is a Mac and PC compatible software. It does um, allow you to create a file on a Mac and give it to people that are using Illustrator on PCs and go back and forth with absolutely no problems. Uh, the reason I use Illustrator is because I'm a Mac guy. If you're a Macintosh user, uh, Corel does not have a solution for you. Uh, they actually used to. They took it away in version 12 uh, and did not, um, they don't support it for, for Macs anymore. So if you're a Mac user, you're going to find yourself working in Illustrator uh, mainly because of that one reason. Now the image you see on screen here, I put this in here because when I teach my seminars around the country, I get a lot of people asking me um, about vector files and the differences between raster and vector, which Juliet's going to do shortly in much more detail. But I wanted to show you this image because if you're going to try to cut this image in a CAD cut uh, type of situation, it won't work for you. You're looking at this design and it's extremely complex. There's a lot of small things going on. Um, in fact, if we go to the next slide here, you'll see what it looks like in wireframe mode. And as you can tell, there's um, there's no way in the world that this would cut. So a lot of times that people understand what they hear is they hear the buzzword or the vector word, which catches their ear, and they say, oh, if it's a vector file, I can handle it. So the reason I wanted to show you this. It's not always the case. Sometimes there's vector files can be much more involved um, and extremely complex. Uh, it can also be simple as well. But it, the nice thing is with these programs, you have the power to do either one. Um, the latest version is CS 5.5. Um, it is definitely strong, strong with screen printers. The cost is between $300 and $600. The system requirements, you know what, I can't read those off to you. They're about a mile and a half long. Uh, <laughs> you can find those kinds of things at the, uh, at the Adobe website, though, uh, to make sure it'll work on your system. The one nice thing about today's technology and the computer situations is you can get almost any computer at any... Best Buy, Fry's, Electronics, whatever, any place, Office Depot, and you can pay $500 uh, for a whole computer system, and it's going to have enough muscle to handle the day-to-day -day stuff that you need to do in your art department. That's really nice. It wasn't always the case, but it sure is uh, really nice these days because you can do absolutely uh, anything. Uh, let's go to the next slide, yes. Uh, oh, those are where the two covers of my two books. These are books that I've written um, literally from my seminars that I do, uh, the consulting gigs that I do. These are questions, these are lessons of every single day that happens in business and how do you handle them. Um, and that's, they put those in here, which are very nice uh, for stalls to do. Um, it does have powerful tools allowing lots of effects. All the effects of the, the um, the text effects, the morphing, the arching, the pennant designs, all those enveloping type of effects are in there. There's styles which will allow to allow you to create really nice textures and bevels and that sort of thing. Um, the advanced typography features, there's uh, you, drawing tools, um, filters, there's plugins that you can use with these, this program. 
It's an extremely um, complicated and high-end program. Yet the beauty, just like with Photoshop, and I talk about it all the time, it's it's got the power under the hood for whenever you need it. If you're starting out with Illustrator or even Corel Draw, whatever you're working with, if you're in beginning stages of business or you're just learning the programs, whichever one you happen to work with, if you just start at the level that you are and create the very simple, maybe it's a one color text or some one color, two color simple designs, you just feel confident that as you grow and as you get better with your art uh, experiences, the programs will be there for you. So you can, you don't, just don't get intimidated before you start. Uh, basically, it's one, uh, about the only thing I could uh, throw a little extra in there for you. So. Um, I think That's great advice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, what happens is that most people, and I talk to them in my seminars all the time, they'll come up to me after the classes, and the way I teach things is a very simple, very methodical approach. Just do A, B, C, D, and you're going to get the right results. And it's, it's a way that if you, it's really, it's very, very easy to get intimidated by software because there's so many tools and so many things these, these programs can do in these days. Uh, and the funny thing is, we don't use 5% of the power of e none of these programs for what we need in our day-to-day -day business. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. It's there, but we don't have to worry about it until we need it. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, well then we can talk about, um, is there anything else that you'd like to add today? No. You about can. that? Okay. I'll jump in um, Dane's going to be here for questions yeah. afterward as well, so uh, feel free to type them into your little chat box too because um, he's going to stay for this whole webinar and, and feel free to answer questions after the, se after the session. So um, we're going to go ahead and start uh, talking about the raster versus vector. Uh, most images you see on your computer screen are raster graphics. Pictures found on the web and photos you import from your digital camera are raster graphics. They are made up of grid of pixels, commonly referred to as a bitmap. The larger the image, the more disk space the image file will take up. For example, a 6, 640 by 480 image requires information to be stored for 307,200 pixels, while a 30 by, 3072 by 2048 image from a 6.3 megapixel digital camera needs to store information for a whopping 6,291,456 pixels. That's a lot. <laughs> Since raster graphics need to store so much information, large bitmaps require large file sizes. Fortunately, there are several image compression algorithms that have been developed to help reduce these file sizes. JPEG and GIF are the most common compressed image formats on the web, but several other types of image compressions are available. Raster graphics can typically be scaled down with no loss of quality, but enlarging a bitmap image causes it to look blocky and pixelated. For this reason, vector graphics are often used for certain images, such as company logos, which need to be scaled to different sizes. The next slide also has an image of a raster versus vector. And as you can see on this sample, uh, the pixelation versus the vector, how clear it is. Vector graphics is the creation of dig digital images through a sequence of commands or mathematical statements that place lines and shapes in a given two-dimensional or three-dimensional space. In physics, a vector is a representation of both a quantity and a direction at the same time. In vector graphics, the file that results from a graphics artist's work is created and saved as a sequence of vector statements. For example, instead of containing a bit in the file for each bit of a line drawing, a vector graphic file describes a series of points to be connected. One result is a much smaller file. At some point, a vector image is converted into a raster graphics image, which maps bits directly to a display space and is sometimes called a bitmap. The vector image can be converted to a raster image file prior to its display so that it can be ported between systems. A vector file is sometimes called a geometric file. Most images created with tools such as Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw are in the form of a vector image files. The next slide. JPG is the file extension but is properly referred to as JPEG, short for Joint Photographics Experts Group. This is the committee that created the JPEG standard. JPG is better than GIF for photos as GIF files can only have 256 different colors and JPG can have millions. There is a newer JPEG standard called JPEG 2000, 
which better compresses com, which with better compression and other capabilities, but this isn't in wide use yet. Short for bitmap, it can be, be pronounced as bump or BMP or simply a bitmap image. The BMP format is commonly used raster graphics format for saving image files. It was introduced on the Windows platform, but it is now recognized by many programs on both Macs and PCs. The BMP format stores color data for each pixel in the image without any compression. For example, a 10 by 10 pixel BMP image will include color data for 100 pixels. This method of storing image information allows for crisp, high quality graphics, but also produces large file sizes. The JPEG and GIF formats are also bitmaps, but used image compression algorithms that can significantly decrease their file sizes. For this reason, JPEG and GIF images are used on the web, while BMP images are often used for imprintable images. The next slide. Tagged image file format, a bitmap graphic file format developed by Eldus and Microsoft that handles monochrome grayscale 8 and 24 bit color. Widely used in book publishing and other print related industries, TIFF allows for customization. Several versions have been created, which does not guarantee compatibility between all programs. Files use the .tif and .tiff extensions. TIFF files are reduced size using one of the several compression methods. Portable Network Graphics, PNG, is a bitmapped image format that em employs lossless data compression. PNG was created to improve upon and replace GIF, graphics interchange format, as an image file format and offers better quality than both GIF and JPEG. Next slide. Don't confuse DPI and PPI. These two terms are often used interchangeably, although they refer to two different things. DPI, dots per inch, refers to how many dots, drops of ink per square inch are used on paper to print an image. DPI has nothing to do with your file. A pixel is the smallest piece of any digital image file. The pixel dimensions of your image are the vertical and horizontal measurements of your image expressed in pixels. We use pixel dimension and to determine the largest possible printing size because it is the actual size of your image. The, the abbreviation PPI is pixels per inch. Okay. So we are going to um, turn over to the organizer and ask if we have any questions throughout the webinar. Actually, um, the only question that we really had were a couple customers were inquiring as to if there was going to be any um, demonstration of software. So that was really the only question we had. Well, we are going to have um, Corel Draw learn the basics for heat printing industry on June 2nd. And um, if you want to register for that one to see if there's going to be an actual demonstration versus comparing what the programs are and the different, uh, you know, the ter determination of what you'd like to use. Okay, we did have so one question. primarily the main question. Okay, yep, we did have one um, question after you uh, asked for questions, and that was, can you review the difference between the DPI versus PPI again? Sure. Um, Dane, did you ha have anything to, to mention about the DPI versus the PPI? The uh, DPI usually, it's, um, it's just with your file size. And really, if you're going to create an invector like a Corel Draw program or Illustrator, they don't have to concern themselves with it. And I think that's where the confusion comes in. Uh, you need the proper DPI set up if you're going to, one, if you're going to screen print an image, because you have to make sure you have enough information to create that halftone screen. Uh, if you're going to print it digitally, you have to have enough information, and that's what these things are. The, the DPI and the, the 300, um, 300 DPI for these images that creates the, the resolution. It's, it's how much information the file contains. And the higher the number, the more information is in there. That's why the higher the number, 
the larger the file sizes are. So if it's just vector um, images, they don't really have to concern themselves with it. And I find that a lot of times that's where the confusion is. They, they don't know, one, you can't find it in place in Corel or in Illustrator where to set a DPI. So, um, you yeah, know, that's a little something I would throw in there. Okay, well that helps, it does help explain it a little bit better. Okay, and then I'm getting some questions for Dane. Um, customers are asking about the booklets that we had um, previewed in the PowerPoint, and then you had mentioned that you gave seminars, so they're interested to know um, when you give classes and that sort of information. Okay, sure. Yeah, I speak at all the imprinted sports wear shows around the country, all the ISS shows. Um, I think there's one coming up in Atlanta here in September. Um, but there's, I don't know, six or eight of those throughout the year, I'm, and I do speak at all of those. Uh, I do speak at open houses, so sometimes your, um, your local supply house may have an open house and, and uh, have some seminars and daily things, that uh, doing those kinds of things, and I do those as well. And the graphics that you saw in, in, the, in the presentation here, those were the two covers on my books. They're T-shirt artwork simplified. Um, and those books are designed for screen printers and direct-to-garment digital printers. It's not, not really for CAD cut or CAD uh, print type of situations. We are working on another book for that as well. But, um, but that's what those books were. They're literally just lessons, like 40-some-odd lessons of how to do everyday business stuff. Somebody brings you a photo, you need to scan it in, you need the proper resolution, we need to either optimize that photo, make it look pretty so we can print it digitally, or we need to scan in a logo from a business card possibly and, and have to create artwork and turn it into a vector logo. You know, all those are created in that or done for you step by step in those books. Uh, the orange cover was the Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop version and the blue one was Corel Draw and it also covers uh, a whole chapter on Corel Photo Paint which is um, often overlooked. If you have Corel Draw's uh, suite, if you own the Corel Draw uh, X5 suite, you actually have a program in it that's very powerful. It's called Photo Paint, and basically, it's kind of like a scaled-down version of Photoshop. It's not as powerful, and it's not an industry standard like Photoshop is, but it does allow you to do most things that Photoshop does. It's really, it's kind of a secret that nobody ever talks about or uses, but it's in there, built in. You already have it. So, it's great. Right. Okay, okay, Dane. Well, we do. Sorry. <laughs> We're getting, we're getting more questions for Dane. Okay. <laughs> um, Dane, the biggest question is, do you have contact information, like a website they can visit to see oh, where sure. you're going to be going? And You can go to uh, greatdanegraphics.com. And okay. um, we'll have that kind of, all that stuff there. That's my website. Okay. Do you have any suggestions for a customer that um, purchased Corel or Adobe and they want to learn it from the beginning? Like what type of classes would you recommend? Um, the, the 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 funny part is, it, there's you know there's a lot of classes out there, a lot of local colleges and that sort of thing in everybody's area, and you can take those classes and you can learn a little bit uh, about the program. You can learn what the tools are and how these things function, but you don't really learn how to create things for our industry, and that's the reason I wrote the books. Um, it's been you know there. We do stuff different in the apparel decorating industry than anything else in print or uh, you know the web or anything like that. So it's um, I'm not I'm not sure of any that I know of off the top of my head that would really gear them up for exactly what they need. So, but I would recommend it to take those classes uh, locally or even YouTube some things. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff available on YouTube that. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. So you, that's the problem. You just there's no way to police it. But okay, thanks, Dane. Um, one other question, and I I don't know if you'd be able to um, even give a recommendation for this, but it's a curious question. Andrea is um, trying to recreate hand drawn images, and she's wondering what artwork or software you would recommend um, to do that. Um, it's without knowing the way that she's going to reproduce it. I mean, is she going to CAD print these things, CAD cut these things? Is she going to screen print it, direct to garment digital? I would need to know that first, if she can throw that out to you. Okay. We'll see if she she responds back. Um, direct, she's going to be using direct to garment printing. 
Okay, then I would tell her to use a Photoshop, or if she has Corel Draw, you'd go ahead and use Photo Paint. Because with that program, or those two programs, they're image editors. So you can take a, a continuous tone image and reproduce it. So if they're hand drawings, maybe they're graphite, you know, or, or, or um, charcoal images, or I mean, I'm not sure, obviously. But if it's something like that that has many different tones, darker shades, lighter shades, that sort of thing, then you can capture it by scanning it in or shooting a photo of it, bringing it into Photo Paint or, photo, or, or uh, Photoshop, and be able to control it and manipulate it there. You can add any text that they might want uh, on top of it as well, and then output the, uh, the printed stuff. So I hope that makes sense for her. Thanks, Dane. And yep, that wraps it up for um, our questions. All right. OK, great. Thanks, Allison. All right, well. Like I mentioned that we are going to have a blog posted. We're going to include some links on information on both Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. We would like to thank Dane again for taking the time to be here today. We really do appreciate it. Happy to um, be here. Telling us, teaching us and telling us and uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to do answer all these questions without you because I don't know them all. <laughs> no problem. So thanks again and thank you to our sponsor, Stalls ID Direct. And we look forward to seeing you all on June 2nd for the next webinar at CorelDraw, Learn the Basics for Heat Printing Industry.